What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here and today I'm going to be recapping some of the coolest changes that we're going to see in Season 3 of Project Diablo 2. So I'm going to go over some key character changes as well as some quality of life and some major item modifications that are really going to rework the room words that we use for a lot of the meta that is played in Diablo 2. So I do hope you guys enjoy this video. Quick reminder for those that don't know, if you guys do enjoy my YouTube content, I do stream twice a week on Twitch. I have the link for my Twitch channel in the description below, Twitch slash Dobrunsky125. Uh, any follows over there on that platform would be very much appreciated. But guys, I really hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. <laughs> so the first skill that I want to talk about is Vengeance. This is going to be a really interesting build Vengeance Paladins in Season 3. So a couple things have changed. The first is that Vengeance now has splash damage. The second is the animation has been reworked, actually using a hidden animation in the coding. So it's not a new made up animation. It's actually in the original coding, just the developers never used it. And finally, it now features an element percentage scaling modifier to the actual skill. So your equipment and charm inventory. So let's just take, for example, you have a, you know, a couple charms, small charms that have 1 to 22 lightning damage. That is all added together and then scaled as a percentage on top of the total elemental damage for Vengeance. So this should make the Vengeance Paladin very viable in Season 3. Thunderstorm is the next skill that I want to cover. Its animation has been reworked a little bit, not too much from Season 1. The synergies have been changed a little bit, but every time that bolt hits the ground, it now, instead of releasing a mini Nova like it did in previous seasons, it releases a full-sized radius Nova ring. So it's going to be really cool to see Nova Sorceresses because you could be teleporting around with an active Thunderstorm. So you're spamming your actual Nova and then every single bolt that's striking down from the ground and hitting monsters with Thunderstorm, that will also be activating more Novas as well. So it will look really cool. In terms of scaling in damage, I'm not really sure. We'll have to kind of see in beta testing. It could possibly be a little bit on the side of like too much animations going on, but time will tell. The next really cool skill change is Berserk for the Barbarian. Now I'm going to be honest, I haven't really touched the barb at all in PD2, but the reworking of Berserk almost makes me want to play the character. The animations now work with two-handed weapons using the Frenzy attack. So you can imagine a weapon swing to bug combo. Each single strike you're going to be attacking much faster is doing magic damage. And also the actual skill Berserk now has physical pierce. Now I'm going to be entirely honest, I'm not sure if the physical pierce was on Season 1 and Season 2. It may very well have been, you can let me know in the comment section below. But regardless, the fact that the Frenzy animation is now applied to Berserk, you're going to be striking a lot more targets with doing a lot more magic damage and it should make the Barbarian a lot more viable to play. So the second last skill that I want to touch on is the reworked accelerated throw rate of Plague Javelin and Poison Javelin. So just basically it, exactly how it sounds, you can throw these Javelins a lot quicker which should allow you to spread your poison damage with heavy dense monster areas a lot quicker. It does look really interesting to try out and play. My biggest concern with playing anything poison though is how are you going to handle poison immunities like for instance the rabies druid poison creeper now breaks poison resistance but what is a poison javazon going to do for poison immunities although the skill does look really cool i may end up playing this later on in the season you could always just rely on additional party support members to deal with a lot of the poison immunities in the game or maybe farm specific maps that don't have any poison immunes Again, I'd have to look at all the different monster spawns again because I'm not sure which maps do have poison immunities and which don't. So it could potentially be a viable character for a lot of the endgame mapping. So the last character skill rework that I want to touch on is the new Fireclaw for the Werebear. You guys know me, I am a huge Druid fan and Fireclaw now has splash damage and procs Firestorm on striking. So I think that I may end up transitioning to playing this build. If I can get a really nice 401 socket Grizz Caddy, with a really cool corruption and then just putting some shale runes in it i'll have a really fast attack rate splash damage and i'll be proccing firestorms everywhere the only problem with this build is that you need good gear to kind of get it off the ground so i might transition to it later on and maybe start first with the rabies druid again i'm not sure but i think that the new changes to fireclaw look super intriguing 
and I'm like 99% sure that that's gonna be the build that I play. The last couple of things that I wanna touch on is some major item changes, as well as some quality of life changes. So the first in terms of item reworking, staves now have base faster cast rate on them, and there is some new rumors that work in staves. So your normal versus your elite versus your exceptional staves, they all have different varying amounts of FCR, and there is some new rumors that we can also make in staves. So infinity and doom, you can now roll those in staves. So imagine an Archon staff with infinity, and he actually added FCR to the infinity rumored as well. So it's going to completely flip the meta for the sorceress. So another kind of little thing to touch on is that mana burn has been fixed as well. So again, just think of like a reworked staff, an Archon staff, you roll memory in it, you can now have a really nice energy shield and you have a lot of extra FCR. It's really going to flip the meta for sorcerer skills on its head. I mean, CTA on the offhand is really not going to be a thing anymore. And one last little quality of life change. When you shift click items from your inventory to your stash, they will auto stack now. So this is for gems, jewels, and runes. I love rune stacking. It is such a convenient feature. It's honestly something that I would really like to see implemented in Diablo 2 Resurrected, although we're clearly not going to get it. But the one thing that I did not like about rune stacking is you actually had to manually stack each one if you moved it to your cube or your inventory or your stash. This is no longer a thing in season three. If you shift click something from your inventory to your stash and you already have say like a burr rune and you're transferring a burr rune, it's going to stack automatically. Just a really kind of nice little quality of life change that I think a lot of players are really going to appreciate. The last thing that I want to quickly touch on is a little bit of a sneak peek of a new map that we got to see called the Fall of Caldeum. It really just looks like the docks that you get on the boat to transfer from Luke Galane to Kurost. Again, we haven't really seen anything other than just entering the map. It looks really cool. I mean, we have no idea what the monster spawns are going to be like or the bosses, but again, there definitely will be a new or at least a couple new maps introduced into season three. Well, guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, there's a lot more that's being changed for season three than what I showed in this video. But I just highlighted what I thought were some of the coolest character skill reworks, itemization changes, and also quality of life changes for Project Diablo 2. So a huge shout out to Senpai Something and his community that has just made this fantastic mod. And I do hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, if you could throw a like on it, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube. And I do stream twice a week on Twitch. So any follows on Twitch or subs on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan frickin' tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.